<sighs> Greetings! Welcome to the Board Barista Vlog. I am your Board Barista, Fen. I am also your oh, aspirant minister. I'll be uh, describing that in a bit because you're tuned in to the Board Barista Vlog, a vlog about spirituality, coffee, art, and gaming. Uh, you know, this is a live one take blog. Not gonna get fancy and do any of that special extra recording. Just uh, got myself some notes, make sure I stay on track. Uh, today, as with every vlog, we'll be telling you what coffee we're drinking. This is some Cafe Salvador Equal Exchange with a little bit of powdered creamer. It's kind of a gorilla thing. The cafe is not actually open today. I'm actually upstairs in the chapel uh, doing this recording. So, you get a bit of an echo, a little good acoustics. Don't need to use a microphone. Very good sound quality in here. Uh, but uh, for those, so for those of you that don't know me, that's right. I'm a barista in my hometown. Aspert minister means that I'm not officially ordained yet because that's the highest status. You have aspirant, candidate, fellow, you know, and then fellowshiped and then ordained. It's the whole status aspect of. Uh, becoming a minister in the Unitarian Universalist Association, the UUA. So, I'm just starting out, just got done my first semester of grad school. I'm a student at Midville Lombard in Chicago, Illinois. So yeah, I gotta travel halfway across the country from up here on the Canadian border. Tap a mean bud, I'm up here defending you guys all from uh, crazy Canucks. Or I'm defending all you crazy Canucks from all us crazy Americans. One way or the other, I don't know. But, uh, as yeah, so I'm going to Chicago, I go to Chicago three times a year to uh, take classes and check with my professors and get my syllabuses and do all, all that classwork stuff. And the rest of the stuff is all done online. Uh, doing a volunteer project that I'm going to be wrapping up next month at a alternative high school here in my hometown as part of my community studies course. Uh, I also do a couple of lay-led services. You also find on this channel, on this channel, there are lay-led services uh, that I've recorded uh, as, well, it's not really lay-led because I started recording them once I became an aspirant. So, yeah, it's uh, the beginning of my professional minister career. I plan on, from here on out, this channel will have hopefully every sermon I give from aspirant status all the way up to fellowship, ordained, and possibly even, hopefully, if YouTube sticks around as long as my career does, my last and final retirement sermon will be on this YouTube channel. So you definitely want to you know, subscribe and follow and uh, watch my career grow. I wonder if this blog sticks around. Maybe it, it might, maybe it not. Uh, just trying it out. But the goals for this right now is to give everybody a chance to look at and see the life of the seminary student, the, you know, thoughts, ideas, the, the books I'm reading, uh, the stuff that goes into the services that I'm going to have, you know, uh, places I'm going to end up going on my travels, you know, some videos of Chicago, some videos here of Holton for my students that are back at, uh, back, uh, back, back west or north, south, east, wherever y'all are. Uh, you guys can get a little look into my daily life or semi-daily life. Another thing is I don't know where I'm going. Am I going to do every day I'm going to film a video or if I'm going to do a couple days a week? But we're going to hammer that as we go. Uh, so like I said, you know, like and subscribe because for right now, until I get a routine and I figure out what we're what I'm doing, this is going to kind of be a little, might be a little guerrilla style where there might be some vlogs every once in a while. So definitely, uh, yeah, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, do all those crazy YouTube things that make me be able to spam message you, you know, all the time. So, uh, I'm going to do these sit down talks as part of the vlog. There might, I've got an idea to do some meditations as well because uh, definitely I have a Jedi slash Buddhist uh, spiritual side to my 
to my message. I have uh, the art gaming side. You know, there's there's some nerd and there's you know some big G religion, some little G religion, some. Buddhist religions, it's just a little, little bit, a little bit of everything. There's, I'm still, you know, this is this is part of this process. I'm hammering out my spiritual path, uh, dipping my toes here and finding out where, you know, I'm not fully, I'm not, I'm not done with school and I'm not done getting exposed to new things and new ideas, and none of us really are. It's part of the Unitarian Universalist path. Is, it's, it's never, oh, we just get here to this step, you do all this stuff, get to this step, and you're done. It's a life process. So this is why I want to do this vlog. I want to invite you along with me on my life process. Uh, so I'm going to do some meditations. We're going to have these sit-down chats. Uh, there's going to be services uh, recorded and put up. So there's a lot of stuff you're going to be seeing here. There's going to be some times where it's just I'm going to fire up the, the, the streaming rig and do some art because I have my web comic, the Board Barista comic. Uh, link for that should be down in the description, uh, as well as uh, my, you know, actual blog, blog, you know, typed out blog. The link for that will be down below too. That has some of my the write-ups I did in order to get my ideas down for my sermons. So the sermons that are on the the writing blog and the sermons that are here, they're the same topic, a lot of the same ideas, but it's you know, the written version that I sat there and I thought about, and then there's the, I don't, I don't want to stand here and read verbatim off of a sheet of paper. It's not my, it's not my preaching style. My preaching style is very much like, I got my notes, I'm going to go off my notes. I might have an idea that while I'm standing there, or I might have had an idea while I was going over my notes, that I'm like, oh wait, I forgot to put this in the writing, so I'm going to put this in. So it's definitely, you want to read the sermons, as well as watch the sermons. So again, down below, written sermons. Over here to the side, video sermons. And, you know, art and gaming. And so there'll be some streams where I'm working on the webcomic. There'll be some streams where I'm working on just some, some random sketches I want to do. So there's also going to be some gaming streams because, hey, I'm a gamer. I'm a nerd. You know, this is what makes me relatable. This is why I want to work with teenagers as, as, as well. It's why I'm working at an alternative high school, uh, you know. I'm, oh, I'm a lot older than I look, but uh, I'm young at heart and young in face. So, uh, yeah, that's the type of videos we're going to do. And, of course, as with every single person that's putting content out on the Internet, I also have a Patreon. Again, link down below. Uh, I know that I started the Patreon as well as starting the first serious part of the aspect of asking people to do this. Um, again, I'm a college student. I work as a barista. Uh, there's, I have a ton of textbooks that I need to buy. Uh, you know, I'm not asking for everybody to go out and give me 200 bucks. I'm just asking, hey, can I have a buck? Can I have five bucks? You want to throw me some cash? That's cool. It really helps out, and uh, so there's a Patreon. That's you know, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm sitting here going eh, change, change, need some change. Can you can you, can I have some money? No, uh, it's just there if you feel like making a donation. If you feel like helping me out, that's it's appreciated. It's not mandatory because everything's going to be free. The web comics free, the blogs free, these videos are free. There's nothing's going behind a paywall at all. Patreon is just a way for you to just it's 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 the collection plate. It'll get passed around every once in a while, and if money comes in, money comes in. If money co doesn't come in, uh, I'm not, it's no sweat off my back. I'm still going to produce this comment content. I'm still going to create this art this archive of my work. Or if you don't want to just give me money on Patreon, or if you just don't want to give me a donation on Patreon, if you like my artwork, just contact me. If you want a, if you want an actual like physical printed out copy of one of my web comics, uh, I'll I'll do a print. I'll get it freshly printed, send it out to you for 
us we'll talk we'll talk you know if you want to make if you want to just buy something off if you want to buy a piece of art that's cool too uh we can i or if you want to commission some, for me to do something we can talk about that but you know there's i have to bring it up that there's ways to help me out and there's ways to make a donation but uh just because you know there's life you know there's there's a lot of stuff to do and it's you know one of those things everybody's gotta you gotta what i like to tell my friends especially when they're like trying to try to date somebody you know you gotta be honest with your intentions off the bat you know if you're like hey i like you i think you're cute you know, I'm not asking you out to hang out as a friend. I'm asking you to hang out as possibly become my girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. You know, you gotta you gotta start off with that because if you don't, you got miscommunication and people are like, "Well, what do I do?" And it's just like, "Hey, you want to donate?" So I'm saying, "Hey, if you want to donate me some money, that's great. If you want to hire me to do something and make and pay me, that's great too. Just put it out there because if I didn't put it out there." You might be having the idea. It's like, oh, I would love to donate to this guy and help him out on a spiritual path and help him with his with his education and stuff and help get him some better recording equipment because this stuff looks like crap. You know, if you if you want to help me out with those three goals, that's what I'm asking. That's why the uh, the Patreon's there. It's just help me out with school, help me out with better equipment, you know, or you know, actually buying some of my art, but. Uh, now, like I said, there's going to be some gaming stuff. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to just go for Pokemon walks. And uh, I know I need to get a rig for the camera so I can have that on me so we can walk down the road and I don't have to be holding the camera, holding the cup of coffee and a cell phone at the same time. I only got two hands. So that, uh, it's called a Snorri cam rig. It's a first-person body cam. So like I would be moving, like I'm moving right now. But if I was wearing the story cam, I'd be stationary, and the wall behind me would be moving. Uh, if you ever watch any of those movies where somebody like is very disoriented and they like just woke up and they're wandering through a party and they're all like dazed and confused or a little fear and loathing of Las Vegas, if you know what those movies are about, you know what those people are on. So uh, now you have those video. Like I want to do that kind of video where I can walk down the street. I can have a talk with you about current events, something that's happened in the news, just something spiritual, coffee, art, or gaming related, something that's in my head that I feel the need to talk about. I just want to go for a walk while I try to hatch some Pikachus and Snorlaxes and different stuff like that at some uh, two, five, and ten kilometer eggs. You know, you can do that. If I'm just sitting around playing some video games at the house, uh, Fire up the stream. We can talk about stuff. You can ask me questions during those videos. You know, there's going to be different formats, uh, different stuff that's going to happen. I'm just going to start throwing some spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Is really what I'm trying to say. And uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. I mean, uh, I'd love to hear from everybody else. Uh, you know, if you if you watch some of my sermons before and you got some ideas about how I can do it better or you got any sort of feedback for any of these videos that uh, you want to give me, I am fully open. You know, that comment section below is there for that. It's it's not for uh, being an internet troll, but if, hey, if you want to be an internet troll and uh, you want to be that kind of guy, you know, Sadly, the fact of the matter is in this world that uh, there is no such thing as negative press and uh, negative publicity. But you know, as a as a as a seminarian, as a moral leader, as a spiritual leader, you kind of just gotta ask people like, why are you gonna be an internet troll? Why do you gotta bring that negativity into everything? Why do you have to? Why is it that we live in a society where the loudest jerk ends up being the one that everybody listens to? It's it's never, you know, you never talk about positive stuff. You never talk about the good stuff. You never talk about, uh, 
like I was just talking with Reverend Dave, he's the, the minister for uh, the Unitarian Church here in Holton. And there's this whole conspiracy over one of the one of the players on the Patriots uh, didn't get to play in the in the Super Bowl, but he played in like ninety three percent of every single you know play that the, every single offensive play that they've done the Patriots done this season. The guy was in, but he was pulled for the game against New Orleans, and he was played for the game against the Super Bowl. And they're all and everybody's like, well, what's Belichick? Belichick is. Belichick pulled that guy. Why did Why didn't Belichick put him in the game? Uh, oh, Belichick's not telling us the reason why. There must be some reason. This guy must have been, you know, doing drugs and wild part, wild, you know, wild parties in his, you know, hotel rooms on the on the road and just. You know, I just must have been out just being a bad, bad man. He he couldn't have just been like the fact that he wasn't like on top of his game. I couldn't be. It had to be something horrible. It had to be like. You know, and it had to be something horrible about Belichick because the Patriots didn't win the Super Bowl. Instead of it just being a whole thing, the guy's not, the guy was, you know, Belichick didn't feel like he was the right person to have in the game. He wanted to pull him out. The, he felt that the, the player needed more work. But, you know, it's that whole thing of you never hear the positive news. You never, you only hear the negative. And that's why, in my personal opinion, we're stuck with Donald Trump as being the president. Because seriously, um, how much do we hear about? Well, we heard a lot about Bernie Sanders, and we heard a lot about Hillary. Because the Democrats only had two candidates in the election. I personally thought that Gary Johnson was the man to vote for until his uh, interview on the Nightly Show got completely trashed, and uh, that uh, that Comedy Central just that comedian on Comedy Central. Larry Wilmore, host, the host of the aforementioned Nightly Show, you know, he was just like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be smoking dope while you're the president." I know you're big, you're big pro marijuana, pro recreational marijuana guy. You know, ooh, four twenty gonna be a national holiday when you get president. It just, you know, would not shut up about the dope and wouldn't talk about the issues and just made him out to be a big joke. Two weeks later, Larry Wilmore no longer has a show on Comedy Central, and. Uh, because, you know, Comedy Central, anybody who followed the presidential election knows that Comedy Central did not want Hillary, did not want Trump. They wanted a third party. They wanted, you know, sure, they would have loved to have Gary Johnson be it and been the whole thing of being able to be his sounding board. But that one comedian just ruined the interview, you know, and ruined his career. And uh, we didn't hear anything more about Larry Johnson. You know, we heard this, you know, and ever, all the millennials, all the people, you know, all the people my age and younger, we all wanted, we all wanted Bernie after, after we either wanted Bernie, and then when Bernie went out, we were like, we want Gary. I think Gary went out, and then it's like, oh, well, I'm still going to vote for Gary. And everybody's like, oh, we got to vote for Hillary, or we got to vote for Trump. And it's just like, and you like there was like what seven different candidates for the Republicans, and you never heard during the news about any of them, all, unless that you heard that that Trump was bad mouthing them and just yell, you know, tearing them a new one during a debate. And it's like, oh, so Trump, you know, Trump is seen as the aggressive of the alpha male. You know, now it's the whole fact of Trump's name is being said twenty times to every one time that one of the other one of the other seven. Republican nominees are so instead of getting just twenty percent more, Trump's actually getting one hundred and forty. You know, his name mentioned one hundred and forty times for every one time his his opponent's name's getting mentioned, and it's just all that negativity and all that. Ooh, yeah, we're gonna show. Hey, yeah, it's, we're gonna show these. You know, show Trump yelling at this other guy and making fun of him because that's that's news. People will tune in and listen to that and watch that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's why hockey is such a popular sport. Everybody tunes into hockey in order to see the fights. Hockey and NASCAR, they're the two sports that you do. You don't watch hockey and NASCAR for the game unless it's your favorite team and it's the, it's the Stanley Cup playoffs or, or it's the last race of the season and, you're, and your guy needs to, needs to go through this race and finish in the top 10 in order to actually make points leader. You don't really watch it 
for the actual sport until it's the championships on the line. You just watch hockey and NASCAR because you know that somebody's going to get a wreck. Somebody's going to you're going to you want to watch people watch NASCAR to see crashes and see cars get torn up because they can't go out in their everyday lives and drive 200 miles per hour and wreck their own car. You know, but they'll watch somebody do it on live TV, and then the guy get pulled out of the truck, out of the car, and he puts his hands up there. Woo! Everybody's like, "Yeah, he survived. Yeah, it's good." You know, well, and then everybody watches hockey because seriously, when you're having a debate at work, you can't just pull somebody's shirt up over their head and start uppercutting. You can't do that in polite society. But in hockey, somebody ends up hitting you, you know, hits you too hard, or messes up your play. Yeah, it's perfectly okay just to freaking pull their shirt up over their head and give them a couple uppercuts. And it's that negativity, that barbarism, that, that bad press, the slant, you know, you know, Trump tearing into his opponents on during the debates, and that's that's the stuff that gets talked about. You know, it's you get a little bit of you know, you turn on the news nowadays and you hear probably for every humanitarian aid and every social justice piece. And every good story, every feel-good, heartwarming bit of news on the on the on the TV. For every minute of that, there's a, probably five minutes, three or five minutes of bad stuff that happens, and you end up with this. Instead of trying to get, you know, that positive positivity, you got positivity, and then you go right down to the negative, and you stay in the negative longer than you stay in the positive, and that just affects people. I mean. As being a as being a minister and a spiritual leader, I need to stay in touch with the news. I need to keep in touch of world events. You know, I need to know that when I need to know when there's bad things happening in the world, so I can bring it to my congregation's uh, attention during candles of joy and concern. I can light a candle for an area that's been hit by a hurricane or a tornado or an earthquake, and we can send some positive vibes out to the universe and try to you know help that healing. You know, kind of thing, and even uh, reporting. You know, we had on Standing Rock was going on last year. We had people who were coming up and lighting candles for that, and we were always talking about Standing Rock. And we actually had, uh, we actually paid uh, speaking fee to a couple from Maine that actually went out to Standing Rock, and and that they actually put that that speaking fee. They actually, I believe, they actually put that into. Into help and aid that was going out there and stuff like that, and you know, there's this whole thing of like, you know, this good karma that you try to put out into the world in order to counteract this. So you have, so I have to expose myself to the negative of the news and, and media and stuff like that. But I just, getting back to this blog, I mean, I just want to put some I want to put some good stuff out in the world. I want to talk about some good stuff, and I want to talk about the bad because there's, you know, it's, it's Not every movie can be. Not every movie can be Return of the Jedi. Not every movie can end. You know, not not every moment in life can be the whole fact of the hero wins, evil is crushed, and we got singing, dancing teddy bears, and everybody gets to feel warm and fuzzy and have the big party and fireworks. Some, a lot of moments in life are Empire Strikes Back. It's you know, you got your hand cut off, you know, you, you found out that the worst person in the universe is actually your dad and your best friend's gotten kidnapped and sold sold to a crime boss and you gotta get, and you know, everything's, you know, everything ends on a down note. Some days, some days are Empire Strikes Back, so some days are Return of the Jedi. And then you got some days or phantom menace where everything went wrong and you're just kind of laying there in bed with anxiety going, what did I do? Oh, I messed this completely up. Uh, you know, and that's what I'll be talking about here, you know. I'm talking about current events, nerdy stuff, and, you know, there might be some times where I'll go see, a, I might see a movie, sit down here and we'll talk about it. You know, we'll talk about movies, we'll talk about... Uh, comic books, we'll talk about video games, we'll talk about card games, we'll talk about role-playing games, we'll talk about every, whatever comes to my mind that I want to sit down here and talk about instead of saving it. If it's a good topic, 
it might be a thing that comes back up and they might see it in a form where I'm all nice and dressed up and I got my tile and I'm up in front of the congregation and I'm giving a sermon. Some of these vlogs, you know, these are these are my chance to spitball, like I said, take that raw pasta, pull it out of the pot, throw it against the wall, and see if it sticks. You know, this is and this is me inviting you to be part of that experience, about being part of looking at the spaghetti and going, well, it kind of bounced. We kind of got to work on that. And that's, you know, you get to help me out here. Put your comments down below and be like, yeah, man, that, that spaghetti, that spaghetti, you, you got to cook that longer. That's, that's only been in there for three minutes. Or you can tell me when it's overdone. And it's like, ah, that's bushy spaghetti. But then you can tell me, oh, el dente, perfecto, bellissimo. Sorry, I don't speak. I don't actually speak Italian. That's just kind of like the stuff I know from uh, spaghetti, from pasta commercials. I got one friend of mine that's actually Italian that speaks a lot more Spanish than he does Italian. It's weird. Uh, but that's him. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, I know. But uh, oh, I gotta finish this coffee. See, that's the whole thing. I'm planning on doing it. Each one of these videos is going to be a cup of coffee long. But I'm fine, but I think I need to either drink more or have a smaller cup because this thing, about the size of my face, this thing is huge. And we notice that I like to go So I'm yammering along, talking up a storm. I'm thinking I'm gonna to try to keep these videos under a half hour, but you never know. It all depends on how much coffee I actually end up consuming because once this is done, the video ends. And that will be the rule for pretty much all of these videos, all the vlogs. And we will be, I'll be doing some stuff where I'll, you know, this will actually be labeled as a vlog. So vlogs are one coffee long. I'm just glad Starbucks doesn't have a long coffee. Ugh, don't even get me started on Starbucks. Ugh, when I was in Chicago, we are talking about blonde co Starbucks blonde coffee breaks all the rules. And I'm like, well, actually, if you actually understand, uh, a lot of baristas actually prefer, uh, especially on the West Coast, that uh, you use a lighter espresso because the fact of the matter is, is when you're brewing, uh, when you're roasting the espresso bean, the oil gets forced outside of the bean during the roasting process. That's why your darker roasts are, are very oily, very shiny, because that oil's been pushed out. It also ends up so the oils break down more and you don't get as much crema uh, when you brew your espresso shots from a dark roast as you can get from a light roast. It still has the oil trapped inside the beans. So you also get that, that oil is what gets the clump and the pillowing when you get the fresh ground, when you get fresh ground coffee, it kind of sticks together. Is because of the oils are trapped inside and holding it together, and they haven't broken down and lost their stickiness. So, uh, yeah, Starbucks, you're not fooling anybody. Your blonde coffee is does not break rules. You're just trying to do some. Ooh, we're being bad. Let's get some. Ooh, we're being naughty. Look at our advertisement campaign. Yeah, no, see. All the topics come right back around. But uh, I think I got one last. Yeah, I'm pretty much rambling. I think I got just like one last drink. Ooh, I got one last mouthful on this. Okay, so I'm going to finish this. And I'm going to say that I would like to, for everyone tuning in, I would just like to say, Thank you, bless you, and may the force be with you. This has been Board Barista Vlog number one in the books. Have a beautiful day.